an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie. Winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to be looking at hypertrophy. Now, I mentioned a week or two ago... Uh, we did a we did a session on hypertrophy, so we're going to continue going down this hypertrophy rabbit hole and talk about building muscle. But this one's kind of interesting because it's really focused on the rest between sets. Now, when I was younger, I watched a it was like a documentary or a news show, something like that. Just that you know, uh, TV. I was watching TV and a bodybuilder went to go work out with this legendary bodybuilding coach and the legendary bodybuilding coach absolutely scorched this guy by only allowing for 30 seconds of rest between sets. And that stayed with me for a long time, and I would practice it, and I would often try to keep my rest time down to, to get this greater hypertrophic, uh, hypertrophic outcome that this legendary bodybuilding coach did. Um, well, there's some research on it, and... Uh, it doesn't necessarily show the 30 seconds, but there's a study that was done, and there's some conflicting research out there between the amount of time that you rest between sets, but really what it's kind of showing is that there's no change between lower set range, uh, lower rest, and then some of them show differences. So let's look at a research study, and this one is done by Schoenfeld et al., and it's called the Longer Rest Periods, Endurance, Muscle Strength, and Hypertrophy in Resistance Trained Men. Now, some of the other studies that show rest between sets were in untrained men. So what we're looking at here is um, two different groups. We've got a one-minute rest between set group and a three-minute group. So these are all university students ages 18 to 35, no neuromuscular disorders, all experienced lifters, no anabolic steroid use, and all of them agreed not to use anabolic steroids during the run of this eight-week study. So there are seven major exercises that were done. And this is how the workout was set up. There were three days a week, never on consecutive days, three days a week, this workout uh, for eight weeks, three sets of eight to 12 reps, and uh, the exercises and sequences between the two groups were exactly the same. So the only thing that's changing is whether you wait three minutes between each set or you only rest 60 seconds between each set. So here it goes. The pre and post measurements were taking uh, and they used an ultrasound imaging unit. It's called a B-mode ultrasound imaging unit. And they did elbow flexors. They did the triceps, which are elbow extensors. They did the anterior quads, and they did the lateral quad, or the vastus lateralis. So let's look at this. There were three different outcomes that they measured. One was about hypertrophy. The other two that they measured were one rep max strength and uh, endurance strength. So here we go. The one rep max test for, they did two exercises, bench press and squat. So when they performed this at the end of the study, it was the long rest group that was significantly greater in the one rep max test than the short rest group, All right? So, and that may not be too surprising, actually. So as we are doing heavier lifts, um, when we wait in between sets, we're able to build up more of our phosphocreatine stores that allows us to get more out of our lift. So when we lift with greater rest in between, we're usually able to get more repetitions out. We're able to get more volume to produce. So first set, you might be able to do 12 uh, reps, the next set maybe 10, the next set maybe eight. 
with the uh, with the one minute break, but with the three minute break, you might get 12 and then you might get 12 again and then you might get 12 or 11 or 10. So you're just getting a little more volume in each of those. All right, well, uh, then there's the endurance test that they did. Now this was 50% of the one rep max and they did it AMAP, as many as possible. And both groups saw significant increases in endurance, and there were no significant differences between the two groups. So the one-minute rest group and the three-minute rest group, no significant difference. I will say this, and this was pointed out in the study, kind of a, not a caveat so much, but just as a point to make, which is when you decrease the rest, it's going to increase your ability to buffer the metabolites that are produced. So whether that is acidosis, right? It's a lactic acid, other metabolites that are produced. And so we create a buffering capacity. And if you have less rest time, then you increase your ability to buffer with those, um, those metabolites. So that burning and things like that. And so that can therefore increase your ability to, um, to have endurance, and that comes through uh, through limited rest. But with that said, between these two groups, one set, uh, one minute and three minutes for the endurance test at the end, uh, there was no no significant difference. Now let's talk about hypertrophy because this is important, and this is the one that we were asked about early on uh, a few weeks ago. I did one topic on hypertrophy, uh, discussing rep ranges and how NASM has changed the rep range. Uh, for hypertrophy based off the new uh, research that has come out about hypertrophy. So this is about rest range. And so here it goes. It says, uh, hypertrophy muscle thickness was significantly greater for the long rest group, three minute rest between sets versus the short rest group. That's the one minute rest between sets in the anterior thigh and uh, in the triceps they were not significantly greater in the elbow flexors, so the biceps and the brachialis, uh, and the lateral quadriceps, so the VL. So they saw significant differences in two major muscle areas they were measuring, but they didn't see a major difference in the other. Now, what they, you didn't see that the short rest group was created more hypertrophy. You just didn't see that there was a significant difference in how much more growth was in the three minute group. All right. So let's, let me just provide the, the roundup here. And this is a quote, it's directly taken from the study. And it says the present study provides evidence that longer rest periods promote greater increase in muscle strength and hypertrophy. Our findings are consistent with the current recommendations for maximal strength gains but run counter to the general hypertrophy training guidelines. When the results are taken together um, with a couple of different authors who have studied this, they said it would seem that a minimal rest interval of approximately two minutes would be recommended for maximizing gains in muscle size. All right. Uh, and one more thing to go with this study and kind of this literature review or the study review. So this is not a literature review. This is just a review of this single study. And as most good uh, authors point out, many of the best researchers are going to say this. More studies need to be done. More studies have to be done on this. Uh, but it does, in fact, contribute to the body of research when it comes to hypertrophy. And I think it's a valuable topic to discuss. So um, what we saw here is that a longer rest period, up to three minutes, got greater um, uh, one rep maxes at the end of the test. And in general, we saw greater muscle hypertrophy. Uh, you didn't see any difference in the endurance. There were no differences in the lateral thigh, no differences in the elbow flexors, but in the other ones we did. So I thought it was an interesting study, gave us a little more, I don't know, meat to chew on when it comes to learning about rest intervals that you might take while focusing on hypertrophy. So that guy, that bodybuilder uh, coach that I studied, I think a lot of the bodybuilders were amazed by him primarily because like he had some legendary athletes coming out of there. I don't know if the anabolic steroid use 
and the shorter rest periods were highly compatible. But I also know that just because a top coach does it, and it's different than a lot of other people, uh, doesn't mean it's the best thing. So again, it's kind of the the research and the anecdotal are are different. And so when somebody has a friend, or I know a guy, or this coach does this, and he's super famous, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. And I think a lot of people can get really good outcomes by not, even though they may not do the most beneficial or the uh, the most maximizing results. But if you do it consistently, you're still going to get great results. So with that being said, I look at this as an opportunity to take this, this show that I saw so long ago. And I was like, that's the way it's got to be because this guy did it. Um, and research gives us better guidance than the my best friend or this coach told me or I got this from this person and they're super famous. So I think that's something that's good for us to take home and take away from it. If we can lean on the research, we can lean on the people that are pulling data from more than one. So we talk about how many people, I even talked about it in this study, how many people are in the study they had, uh, and it's not a big study. Uh, oh, I didn't talk about it, probably. Uh, they had 11 in one group and 10 in the other. And um, and it was uh, a little bit more, but I think two people dropped out during the course of the study. They had an 86% uh, adherence rate for the people that stayed in the study, which is really good, quite good. So um, when you look at these studies, you really garner a lot of information. You can take information and apply it greater than I know this one trainer that has his way and charges super high amounts of money, and I want to be like that guy, so I need to be unique like that guy. And I think what we really need to do is find our own way of being unique, and one of those ways is being research-based and evidence-based. It doesn't mean you can't be innovative. I think that's great, but as soon as we start learning and gathering a lot more data that shows us that though it's innovative and interesting and fun, and there may be other benefits that are coming from it, but just if I'm saying that benefit is hypertrophy, and now we know that the greatest hypertrophy isn't necessarily from the method this person was doing, that's when things have to change. So anyway, thank you for listening. I appreciate you. Uh, I know that you come here for fitness, and I hope that you feel comfortable listening to this and sharing it with your fitness friends, uh, your fitness adjacent people. So they are not necessarily personal trainers, but they love training and they're interested in it. So share it with them, like, subscribe. And if you want to reach out to me, you can do so and hit me up. We'll put some stuff in the mailbag and I'll answer questions that you may have. You can hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or you can email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Thanks for listening. Keep inspiring people to fitness. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.